Whether you are building a freeway overpass or baking the perfect loaf of bread, the key to success starts with precisely using the right ingredients. All the marketing, promotions, and sales in the world won't help you if your products use flawed materials. Hello, I'm Denise Kennedy. For 32 years, I've been in the rubber recycling industry to promote standards and test methods in the development of new products and new technologies using recycled rubber materials. In this video, we will show a step-by-step -step demonstration of a vibratory shaker system, a cost-effective method of testing rubber materials that businesses can effectively incorporate to develop new markets and dependably manufacture new rubber-based products. While this technical information is good, what is even more critical is understanding why this information is important. Today, recycled rubber is a part of our circular economy, where rubber is continually recycled into new products that we see everywhere around us. Rubber is used to make ground stabilization reinforcement, traffic safety products, flooring in gyms, roofing materials, even used as new materials in tires. There are products and opportunities available to you right now. All it takes is an understanding of the importance of recycled rubber and how to properly test rubber materials to maintain consistent quality. Once you've learned this, you will be in a great position to produce a new product or service in this circular economy. Let's get started. The first step to ensure consistent material quality in rubber recycling materials is to follow the ASTM International Standard Designations for Recycled Rubber. ASTM International is a volunteer standards group that is an open forum for the development of international standards, including recycled rubber. Today, 12,800 ASTM standards operate globally, and they are applied to everything from steel, tires, to pipes, even to sustainability. The main thing to remember is that these standards help separate out different rubber types as the classification of a rubber source can have a major impact on the type of product it is used for. However, these sets of rules are not set up by some obscure body. ASTM International Standards are set up by us. Professionals in the rubber recycling industry with experience in the field. By using these standards and integrating them into rubber recycling, we can increase the output and veracity of the products that we create. Our online user guide will have detailed breakdowns on the classification of rubber, test methods, and practices. Now let's have a look at a vibratory shaker testing system and how it works. The shaker system testing process, which follows ASTM D5644, is easy to do but requires a bit of preparation. The ASTM D5644 is a standard that defines the exact steps taken and how to measure results. Over the next few minutes, we will show you an overview of the testing process. For detailed specifications, tables, and other background information, please see the user guide we have created to accompany this video. First, we need to lay out all the materials and tools that we will need before getting started. You'll need about 15 items, including a vibratory shaker system. Here, we are using the WS Tyler RX29 model, which is designed for 200 millimeter, eight inch diameter test sieves. You'll need multiple 200 millimeter, eight inch sieve trays for testing. A digital scale with tear function with a weight sensitivity of a minimum of 0.1 grams. You'll need an assortment of brushes, such as a soft brass wire brush for materials that are 425 micrometers, 40 mesh, and coarser, and a soft nylon bristle brush for cleaning sieves that are finer than 425 micrometers, 40 mesh. Measuring cups to accurately load in the material for testing. Rubber balls or plastic rings. You'll need two per sieve tray. A flow agent, such as magnesium silicate or silica. And finally, a few extra tools to extract the metal and fiber from the screen during reporting and generally clean up. Once everything is in place, we are ready to get started. There are five steps to using the Rotap system. Selecting the screen trays, prepping the specimen, preparing the flow agent, screening the specimen, and then evaluating the results. 
First, we'll need to select test sieve screens appropriate to the particle size distribution of the product being tested. We are using two millimeter, 10 mesh material that was selected by a rubber molding manufacturer. The particle sizes and number of test screens used depends on the particle size distribution that is requested by the customer for use. We are using six sieve trays and a receiver pan for purposes of testing the two millimeter, 10 mesh material. You should also verify that each screen has been cleaned. Next, start stacking with the receiver pan on the bottom. Add two rubber balls or two plastic rings to each sieve tray. This is the standard for products of 425 micrometers, 40 mesh, or finer. For products coarser in size than 425 micrometers, 40 mesh, the agitation aid is optional. The sieve trays are stacked in order of increasing mesh size with the highest sieve number on the bottom and the lower sieve number on the top. In step two, we'll get the rubber specimen ready for testing. Place an empty measuring cup on the digital scale. Press the tear button and the scale display should show zero. Obtain approximately 150 grams to 200 grams of particulate rubber from the lot. Use the glass or metal measuring cup to weigh 100 grams of specimen to the nearest gram. Transfer 100 grams of the specimen into the open mouth glass jar. Now in step three, we prepare the flow agent which lubricates the rubber so it can go through the mesh. Place an empty glass or metal measuring cup with a volume of 500 cubic centimeters on the digital scale. Press the tear button and the scale display should show zero. Measure five grams plus or minus 0.1 grams of flow agent for products designated coarser than 300 micrometers, 50 mesh. Measure 15 grams plus or minus 0.1 grams of flow agent for products designated 300 micrometers, 50 mesh, or finer. Add the flow agent to the specimen in the glass jar containing the crumb rubber and seal the jar by closing the lid. Shake the glass jar for a minimum of one minute until the agglomerates are broken and the flow agent is uniformly mixed or dispersed. Now we start testing our material. Empty the mixture of the rubber and the flow agent from the glass jar. Place it on the top screen and then place the cover on top of the stack. Place the stack in the shaker. Turn on the shaker system. Activate the shaker for 10 minutes for products designated coarser than 300 micrometers, 50 mesh. For products designated 300 micrometers, 50 mesh or finer, activate the shaker for 20 minutes. After the shaker completes the appropriate cycle, remove the stack. Finally, we're ready to evaluate the results of the test. Place the empty glass or metal measuring cup on the digital scale. Press the tear button and the scale display should show zero. Brush any material that sticks to the bottom of the screen onto the next finer screen. Any material released into the measuring cup should be included in the measurement of the tray. Then record the mass to the nearest tenth of a gram. Record any mass less than a tenth of a gram as trace. Empty the glass or metal measuring cup and set the specimen aside. Repeat this process until all sieves in the stack and the bottom collection pan have been emptied, weighed, and recorded. This will give the weight retained on each screen. Total up the numbers on the sieve analysis. The total should not be more or less than two grams of the total specimen that included 100 grams of rubber and five grams of flow agent. If more or less than two grams of the total, then you'll need to retest. The same would be true if you were testing 300 micrometers, 50 mesh or finer when using 15 grams of flow agent. We were testing to see if the two millimeter 10 mesh passed or failed ASTM designation D5603-19, table two, a recycled rubber product designation course sizes. This test provided information on the material that we tested, which will aid in defining what products this recycled rubber material can be effectively used in. For more details on evaluating 
test results, please see the user guide. This is a brief example of the kind of testing that you can do to ensure the quality and type of rubber material that you're going to work with. Think of this as delivering your new product or technology into the circular economy by using qualified materials. Contact us to schedule a demonstration of the vibratory shaker system. For more information on testing and classifying recycled rubber, please download our free online user guide. Thank you for watching.